In this video, I'm going to be looking at the MPT7B model. So this is a, a new model from a company called Mosaic, and they specialize in training models. So they're actually the people who trained up the recent Replit code models. And they've gone and trained up their own uh, fully open source, commercially usable Llama 7 billion style model. Uh, so if, if we have a look at this, for a start, this is pretty amazing that they did it, a startup being able to do this. Also pretty amazing that they managed to do it in just nine and a half days. So the blog post is very good at going through a bunch of different stuff. They've trained up to a trillion tokens, which is the key thing that we want for Llama. And they've also then just made it all commercially uh, available. So they've... the Base model is the key model. So that's the equivalent of the 7 billion Llama model. But they've also then fine tuned some other models as well. So they've got a, an instruct model, which they've fine tuned on the Dolly dataset. We'll look at that in a second. They've got a chat model and they've got a story writer model. So unfortunately, the chat model uses some of the distilled data sets. So that one's not for commercial use, but the other ones are for commercial use. And you can also then fine tune them yourself on your own data for commercial use. So this is in many ways what we've been waiting for. An open source Llama model that's high quality. A stable LM came out with something that was, I think, trained for 800 billion tokens. But it turned out when you looked into it that they had actually made some mistakes in the training for quite a few of the tokens uh, earlier on. And while we've seen models from Red Pajama and Open Llama. These have been just snapshots of models that are currently training. This is the first one that we've actually got where it's the full model, it's finished training, it's been benchmarked to show that it's basically on par with Llama, and they've given us some fine tuning stuff for it as well. They make a big deal, rightly so, of talking about this commercial use thing. Totally kudos to them for doing that. That's really good that they've done that. Some other things that they've done, though, which are really cool, is they've trained with Alibi here. So this is, allows us to actually extend the context of these models. So if you wanted to fine tune up a longer model, you can actually do that. And that's what they've done with this story writer model. So uh, they've taken the base model and then they've done a fine tuning with context lengths of 65,000 tokens. So just to put that in, in context, the original Llama model was 2,048 tokens. The stable LM1, I think they're training at 4,096 tokens. ChatGPT is 4,096. GPT-4, depending on which version you've got access to, is 8,000 to 32,000 tokens. Uh, and then this is basically double that. So I, it's pretty impressive feat that they've managed to do this. And I think this really now opens it up to the community to start playing around with these things and getting versions of these kind of models that maybe are going to be 8,000 tokens, 16,000 tokens, perhaps even 32,000 tokens for a lot of different tasks for this kind of thing. All right. So they've also uh, trained up a nice instruct. So we've got the, the base model, which they talk about here. This, this base model includes flash attention, which, and Alibi, which definitely the, this, I notice in playing with this that the inference speeds are faster than some of the other 7 billion models. And I think this is because of the things that they've used there. I, they've done the storyteller model, which I've talked about. They've done a 7 billion instruct model. And this is short form instruction following. So this is on a data set that they talk about as being derived from the Databricks Dolly 15K data set. Remember, that's the one where Databricks got their employees to write up a data set and Anthropic's helpful and harmless data set. Now, I think this works out to be roughly 59,000 examples for training in here. The good thing with this model is it doesn't seem to have the whole as an AI language model stuff because it, a lot of it was written by humans. So you can go through it. And when you play with it, if you ask it questions, at least in my testing, you didn't seem to get the whole, oh, as an AI language model, I can't X, Y, Z, whatever kind of thing. 
This is definitely, though, not as big a data set as the shared GPT, as the Lacuna models and the Koala models are using for this. So you definitely notice that when you use it. But it's certainly fantastic that they've released this. You can play around with this and try it out. We'll look at in a second the training time and costs for these as well. I, the, and then the last one that they release is a, a chat model. So this is basically fine-tuning on the shared GPT Vacuna uh, and a number of other uh, data sets for this. And this one uh, is not for commercial use because of the data sets that they're using in there. But it does sort of show, okay, how this would compare to some of the other ones. So it, it's certainly worth you know, playing around with it and having a look at, at the model for that. So another thing that they've done, which is really good, is that they've also released a whole bunch of code in this, what they're calling their LLM Foundry. So if we jump in and look at the LLM Foundry, we can see that this has got code for training, for fine tuning, and for evaluating, and then even for inference and serving for these models as well. So that's something that's very cool to look at. And it's been pointed out that they're benchmarking when they're comparing to the original Llama model shows that definitely some of the figures and stats for the original Llama model don't hold up when tested with this framework. So that raises a whole bunch of other issues that I'm not going to go into here, but it's, it's, it's interesting that perhaps they were using some sort of special prompts or something that they haven't really disclosed in the paper itself. So in here, they talked about they trained with zero human intervention on 440 uh, GPUs. And they actually, we'll look at the training in a second. It is pretty amazing that this whole thing is just automated now. So if you're a company looking to do this kind of thing, you could use this library, you could use them as a uh, service provider to actually train up your model. So MPT, what does it stand for? It stands for Mosaic Pre-trained uh, Transformers. Uh, and this is a set of these that they're, they've released. And we may even see some more. I'm not sure if we're going to see a 13 billion here. Uh, my guess is that may depend on financial factors and stuff like that. And if they're going to try and sell that uh, to companies, perhaps. So when we look at the stats here, we can see that they've benchmarked the base model. So this is their model at the top. And this is the Meta AI's Llama model. And you can see that there, there are some differences for these uh, models. On some of them, the MPT wins, and some of them, the original Llama wins. But on the whole, they're pretty close to each other. Uh, so that's something to just notice that this is definitely a model that's you know, on par with uh, a Llama 7 billion model. <coughs> so I mentioned before, one of the really interesting things is this story writer model where they have a context window of 65,000 plus tokens. And they actually even talk about that when they did inference, they even did it beyond that. So one of, one of the things that they did for this was they took the entire novel of The Great Gatsby and it turns out that it works out to be 67,873 tokens and then got it to write a new epilogue at the end of it for it. And it looks interesting because this is one of the things that people have held as the holy grail of being able to put a whole long form document, like a novel or something in, and have the model be able to pay attention to various parts of the, of the actual document, and then use that to come up with things in its generation. And it certainly looks like that's what's going on here. So this is, Definitely an interesting area that we're going to see a lot more of going forward in the future. All right, so just a quick look at their training data for the pre-training. It's made up in a very similar way to Llama. They've used some of the Red Pajama data set that was released recently. They've also got you know code in there. They've also got archive in there. They've got Stack Exchange in there. So this is a very good general broad pre-training data set. For the, the compute for training this, they used A100s and they used both the 40 gig ones and the 80 gig ones by the looks of it. They also show for the actual 
fine tuning of these models, uh, what it took as well. So we can see here that the original training was done with 440 A100 40 gigabyte cards. And we can see the, the batch size for this. We can see the training context length for this was the same as, as Llama there. But then we can also see the fine tuning. So we can see, okay, the number of tokens for doing the fine tuning for instruct, it's actually quite small, right? It's only uh, under 10 million tokens. And we can see that, that only costs thirty-seven dollars to do, in sort of two and a half hours or less than two and a half hours there. So that that's pretty interesting. The chat one took quite a bit more because it was quite a bit more, almost ten x the amount of tokens. And we can see that also the story uh, writer one was quite expensive to do, in that this required the bigger A one hundreds with eighty gigabytes, and took for over four thousand dollars worth of training here. Uh, but it's interesting to think that these models, once they're fine-tuned on much longer context, we're going to then be able to fine-tune them for other things as well that are really long context in a very easy and, and quicker way. This is something that the community is going to need to test going out. All right, let's uh, have a look at what they've released. So they've got the data set for this, the fine-tuning for Instruct, which you can go and uh, get access to straight away and, and use. They've also released a Hugging Face Spaces for the Instruct. So you can just come in here and try out that very simply. They've also released a chat uh, interface for this Hugging Face Spaces where you can come along and chat to the model uh, and try it out quite easily and stuff like that as well. And they've gone on to release the data set for the chat as well here that we can see of what they've actually gone through and done there. So obviously on top of the data sets and the spaces, they've also released these models. So we can see that the story writer model is here, uh, the chat model is here, the base model is here, and the instruct model is here. So let's jump into some code to just go through uh, this. So the interesting thing with what they've done compared to a lot of the other people training these models is they've gone with quite a lot of custom code for improving inference time for adding things to this. And one of the, one of the things that they've done also is set up their own sort of pipeline. So they've got this instruction text pipeline in here. You can use this if you want to just make it easier for doing generation with this. You can come in here and set the, the various temperatures and stuff like that. I played with a little bit uh, of these. I ended up going to the settings for what they have on the Hugging Face spaces, which seems to use a very low temperature. And I, I found sure enough that if I made this too high, I, it seems that it wants a lower temperature than some of the other models have in the past. Anyway, once we've got that, we can just bring it in. We need to have this trust remote code equals true for it to uh, be able to bring in it, its uh, own code for running some of the models and for the inference, etc. Once I set this up so that they do have their own prompt for this, which I've incorporated in here that we can use. And then we can just use it like a normal instruct model. So we can ask it, what are the differences between alpacas, vacunas, llamas? You can see it's giving a, a, a decent response back. If you ask it, what is the capital London? All these are standard things that we've done for the other models. So I'm not going to go through uh, reading them out. I do like that it, for this kind of question where you say, as an AI, do you like the Simpsons? It says, I don't have any feelings, but I can tell you what's on Wikipedia. And this is the nicer way, I think, of doing it rather than what we've gotten a lot with the distilled stuff from the chat GPT, where it basically is just constantly saying, oh, as an AI language model, I can't this and that. So anyway, I played around with doing this. I, I find on the instructing, sometimes it will give very short responses. I'm not sure if that's just because of the way that the Dolly ones are, or if they've if they've done any filtering. I don't think they've done uh, a massive amount of filtering or anything like that here. But I can, can do things like tell me about Homer on the TV show Simpsons, and I put in depth to get it to go a little bit further. It's definitely not in depth though here. You know, what, at least what I would think about. It doesn't do well with the reasoning tasks. Trying it with a few of the different reasoning tasks, it didn't do well with the math kind of stuff. It does get some of them right, like the haiku one. This one you often generate a few times, and sure enough, it will answer yes each time, but it will sometimes be very succinct in just saying, yes, it's possible, or that kind of thing. Whereas occasionally it will actually give you a haiku too, which is quite nice also. 
I tried it out with their examples of converting something to JSON. Did a really nice job of that. Just for basic chat, it, it also seems to do you know okay for this writer shop plan for some of these things. Another thing I tried it out for was summarization too. So here I just uh, copy and pasted a, an article from TechCrunch or a chunk of an article from TechCrunch. And it does a pretty good job at uh, summarizing that article to get the sort of major facts out of it. And then if I ask it to do it in bullet points, uh, it's able to put them in bullet points. Now, I did try getting a lot more bullet points with uh, shorter facts and stuff like that. I didn't have a lot of success with that, but I'm sure that's going to be just how you play with the prompt to get that kind of result out with this kind of thing. Anyway, on the whole, it's a pretty nice model. So I will put this one up for you to play with. I did have a, a quick go at the story writer one, and it is pretty cool doing it, but I I find that I'm not getting great results beyond sort of 8,000 tokens. So I'm going to play around with this a little bit more, and I might actually do a whole video about this one in the future. And then the chat one is similar. This is probably the closest one to like the Vicuna models, the Koala models, that kind of thing. Honestly, I did, at least in my small testing, was I didn't find it to be as good uh, as those ones. Anyway, have a play with the, with the code for the Instruct one. You can try it out and see how it goes. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of fine tunings of the MPT7B base model. I know I'm certainly going to be doing that. I'll probably make some videos at some point of showing some different fine tunings uh, and doing some things that you can do with it. I've been waiting for a, a Llama model that we can use commercially. This certainly looks like uh, it's the first one. My guess is over the next month, we're going to see a few of them. So we're not going to know which one is going to be the best one until they're all out, probably. I think we've got Red Pajama coming soon. We've got Stability AI's models coming soon as well. And the Open Open Llama project as well. And a lot of those have released models already, but they're actually just partially trained models. So it is going to be really interesting to get the fully trained versions of those and, and see actually how good they are. Anyway, as always, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. Uh, if you like the video, please click and subscribe. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.